Matt Carney with us in the Bing Lounge this afternoon. Thank you so much. Welcome back, my man. I guess welcome home, right? That is true, yes. You know, there's got to be some sort of a power that, uh, well, we don't get to feel that you get to feel when you just say, go ahead, sing it. And a whole audience across the nation sings <laughs> the lyrics that you write. That's pretty cool, actually. I don't, yeah. It when is you a say power. it like that. <laughs> Well, you know, that's one of the things that you've got uh, in your music as you bring... Well, first of all, let's go back to this. Of all the mats that I have ever met, you are the only one that spells your name correctly. <laughs> one T. That's right. One, they don't put two P's at the end of stop, so uh, first of all, that way. And now, the last time we saw you, you came through, Young Love had just come out. That's when uh -huh. we saw you in the Bing Lounge last. And you just had music put in that Soul Surfer mu uh, movie. And now you've got some new stuff in another television show, Awake, and you are everywhere. Your music is everywhere. Uh, you must have, like... A message from a music supervisor daily. I, uh, that'd be nice, actually. <laughs> yeah, it is odd how you write these songs. They're like about things that are very dear to you and about friends and families and your own personal life. And then you get that phone call and they're like, we think that this song would be perfect for a doctor to make out to or, you know, something like. <laughs> <laughs> so is that what they do? They tell you the scene? Kind of, yeah. You're like, totally, man. That's what I envisioned when I wrote that song. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think that is? Why do you think your music, and I, this is kind of a softball because I kind of know the answer to it, or at least my opinion of it. Why do you think your music works so well for human drama and that kind of stuff? I don't know. I mean, is that a softball? <laughs> I mean, I think that, uh, I don't know. There's, there's a quality to my music that maybe is visual or something. I don't know. I can't, I, I haven't figured it out. I know that I, I mean, it's very like earnest. I think some of the songs that make it into that world and, I actually know some of the other songs have too. I don't know. Yeah, like it you tell me. Sound, I don't really have a good answer. You know, for me, it's because every time I hear your stuff, it's life. It's us. It's a lot of soul. It's life lyrics as opposed to just bong hits and hacky sack. You know, because <laughs> guys with guitars. Sorry, I am from Eugene, so <laughs> get a little close to home right there. <laughs> Make fun of half our town. <laughs> <laughs> so you got Eugene tomorrow night. That's got to be like some sort of a huge homecoming. I'm sure. How many Matt Carney friends in here today from Portland? You got? Sorry, Holmes. None of them. Sorry, I, Holmes. I, I, I thought I there was no, going to be a little bit more than that. I have no friends. <laughs> good, good. Maybe you'll be right. my friend. All right. <laughs> you got one or two here. So Eugene, uh, I mean, this has got to be some sort of a homecoming. You don't get to do this very often because Nashville's home right now, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I've lived there for a while now, and um, musically, that's kind of a lot of my community is out of there, but yeah, you never really, I don't know, you never leave the Northwest. Uh, some uh, Growing up here, I'm sixth generation Oregonian on my mother's side, so we're like covered wagon, that was my family, you know. Uh, we were covered, we came over the covered wagon, and, and I think everyone from Oregon's, I, I've noticed this as I leave, we're incredibly pretentious about our state. <laughs> so even though I live in Tennessee, I'm always like, in Oregon, the salmon is much bigger and <laughs> the Pinot is way better and the coffee and everyone's so much smarter. And <laughs> Our ferns They're like, bigger. you only have three million people. Like, yeah, of course, yeah, it's not even like a real, it's like a utopia. There's not even like enough people to have a problem. That's what everybody tells me. <laughs> That's the way I like I'm going to look at it that way. Not enough of us <laughs> have a problem, I guess. So you kind of touched on the story of you packing up and heading out. I didn't yeah. know it was from Lake Oswego, but you headed back east. Uh, kind of. It was somewhere. It was like Tualatin, Lake Oswego. I can't remember exactly where it was. In your suburb and packed the stuff up. I was ready to roll, and my friend's parents were like, really had to have every chair fit perfectly into each spot in the U-Haul. I just remember that. <laughs> that doesn't work like that when you're that young, though. I was like, it? let's roll, man. Let's yeah. do this. It was my idea to pack the mattress on the back of the truck because I thought that was a great idea on top of everything so that when we needed to sleep, we could just go, go climb on the back of the truck. And we did that all the way across the country. You don't realize like that doesn't entail showers nor being from Oregon. We had like REI sleeping bags, not realizing that when you get to Kansas in the middle of the summer, that's not a good idea to go to sleep in like a 20 degree below sleeping bag. You wake up with like dripping like a wrestler trying to cut weight or something. That's where the music comes from then, right? That yeah. bohemian kind of feel. <laughs> yeah. 
So who was it? I know there's a lot of influences in your music, of course, but uh, who in your career do you feel was the most influential for you on, uh, well, to, to arise to a point in which you can go to uh, crowds across the country and they can sing your songs? Who, who was the most influential in their career? In my career, I mean, I played a little show in Bend and uh, I, I, I turned down all these record deals and I started, um, you know, I just kept turning him down and I don't know why I was maybe scared to sign anything, scared to commit to anyone. It's the good like organ anarchist roots in me somewhere. Just was scared of the big company and I played in Bend, the show in Bend and, and I'd been gone a long time and it was just this weird dream. I told my parents like, I'm going there like, all right, you're on your own. You know, I was an English major, played soccer, dropped out of all that and started doing music and no one had ever really seen that. I kind of stayed away from Oregon. I just stayed away from like people I knew, you know, it's like I had to go to like weird towns to perform and figure out if I was any good. And so finally I came home and Bend was the closest I played. And, um, and my parents came and my father was there and he watched it and he just really like, it was a really special night, like the stars aligned and, and he kind of had this tear when I walked back off the stage and he's like, wow. And I had been taking loans from my friends trying to make a record and he said, okay, how much money do we need? So you want, you want like a little inheritance now or later. And we started our own record label and we produced on our own. We funded this record that ended up becoming Nothing Left to Lose. And it was kind of the start was just us taking our own journey with the guy that I drove across the country with and we produced our own record. Great story, my man. You're a blessed individual to get he to He says do what I don't give do. him enough credit either. So there he goes. There Pops you go. <laughs> on the radio. Is dad homeschool Quit Oregon? Quit giving me too? crap now. And Is dad a homeschool Oregon? He's he's an he's an East Coast kid, so no, he's the weird one. All right, all right. So, yeah. <laughs> well, good for him. Actually, we are the. Uh, never mind. Once again, you're a blessed man. We dig your vibe, and we appreciate the music you bring us tonight at the Roseland. He's with us in the Bing this afternoon. It's Matt Carney. Like ships in the night.